Hello everyone, and welcome back to another exciting episode of D&D, where we pick up with Spirits Rise, who have just finished their legendary fight with the spider Labros. After defeating him, and nearly everyone else dying, coming down to, oh boy, I think like a couple of hit points between the two of you, uh, they have been awarded with their home, as was promised. So, this is basically what happens to Chala and Bailey. Uh, as you defeat Labros, uh, his body will transmorgify into a giant webbed home. So, yeah. Wow. Like, like right where he is. That right where he was. <laughs> no, no, but like, but like, how big is this? Ho- is it just the entire house on top of like his gravesite, or is it like, uh, like? Well, he doesn't. He doesn't have a gravesite. Remember, he he's a spirit. He doesn't have a corporeal body other than this. So, wait, so, so how... It, it goes wait. like this. It goes, boom, and you're all sucked inside of it. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Is, is the house oh. movable? That's something we're going to explore. But right now, you only have two people conscious. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Millie. Hey, Chala. Do you think we should make sure everyone else is okay? Uh, you think they're fine now? No, we should most definitely make sure they're doing all right. <laughs> hey, Chala. <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh. Right. Um, I think that's the first time Maylee said his name in character. I don't know. Hey, Chala. Hey, Chala. Uh, yeah, okay. So, in all honesty, mm. I don't think that's Seno. Okay. I, I've um, been thinking this for weeks. Um, for, no, for no, we don't day. have the time to argue about whether or not it's and, Seno. And, I, and I've never thought Luca was really alive. Never. Oh. So, <laughs> so I'll check these two. Was... All right, fine. Happy's twitching. <laughs> Ch- I go Ch- to Ch- say no. Shall Ch- check Happy? Say no is indeed naked. <laughs> I, I just, I just. It's so funny to me to have some Indian guy like, I do not think that they were real in the first place. They were just figments. Now is not the time for your <laughs> philosophical conundrums. <laughs> so, how's that for doing? Your companions are alive, although they are still wounded. Well, um,. I have a potion, but uh, I think we'll give them their own time to wake up, okay? They should be fine. <laughs> my God. In the meantime, in the meantime, Meili, yeah. would, you, would you like to show me into your home? Uh, <laughs> Are right. you sure they're going to be okay? I don't have any medicine. But I'm going like... to fill my thing with water. I'll be right back. <laughs> Effie's hard bones are clattering against the stone of the entryway. Like You're just letting them crisp. sit there. <laughs> no. just, there's just feathers like the, all over the entranceway from his from uh, the, Ira's cloak because it's just everywhere. Really? Trust me. Yeah. I've seen Trusting. a lot of de- I've seen a lot, a lot of people die in in my past life. Not tell. Nobody's died here. One hundred percent. We are fine. And they're not just going to randomly like slip into death accidentally because we're not doing no, anything no. for them. Shouldn't no, we at no, least no, make no. them more comfortable or anything? No, no, no. You you can't make them too comfortable, or their body won't have anything to fight against and survive. So let's just move on, and they'll wake up at their own pace. <laughs> Imagine just not. leaving your party members Holy unconscious shit. at the entrance. I'm tiptoes. Chella tiptoes over Senna. Chella. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too conflicted about this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what I can do. Okay, but you made a home for us, right? A, a, a voice will ask. Perhaps I can be of assistance. Ooh. 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 Mr. Namos. Hi. Oh, in my room. <laughs> Chella jumps out of the way, all scared. Oh. It seems that you have defeated the spider. This is good. Now your companions require their rest, as do you. Fear not. I shall watch while you sleep. 
Thank you. That's very, very comforting. Thank you. Go on. Uh, chala, chala Find your boots. Mele. Should we not move our friends somewhere He will start to move them. He will oh. move here, and he will use his tendril oozy arms to pick up each character. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, no, no. Pick me up, too. Pick me up, too. <laughs> please, please. He will also oh. pick up Chala. Chala will play that. Chala will play that to get picked up. <laughs> Did you see Chala oh. give his body go close his eyes? Now, I gotta remember which room is which. I believe this is Luca's room. It is. Let's see. I'll just lay down here. We. Whose rooms are these? Is this? Those would be the girls' rooms. The, the girls' rooms? Yeah, if he gets the queen bed, I get the single. Okay. <laughs> Melee is not being carried around, so. We. <laughs> Happily observing in the hallway. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> like a roller coaster. This is sort of a joy ride for him. Dude, Chella loved that, dude. Whose fucking room is this? That's my bed. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's Iris, too. He gets the hammock. Oh, <laughs> gets Iris, the hammock. Iris, yeah. Oh, apologies. <laughs> yeah. there is there any left? <laughs> Just is there any residue around. left on us when he puts us down? No. Okay. Aww. Do you need assistance finding your room? Nah, I think I got it. Thank you, though. Very well. Please enjoy your rest. I will be watching. Mm, okay. Oh. Okay. Okay, that was fun, but mainly, mm. let's get on to the order of business. Okay? Which is? Um... Do you think they have spices in the kitchen? Oh, I'd love <laughs> to find out. <laughs> do you think he's well stocked? I hope so. That was part of the whole purpose in fighting that spatter was to have actual rations since we're kind of sort of close yeah. to running out. And Chilla looks around. That is not the kitchen. See any... You just walk to the kitchen. Oh, oh, it's one of those fancy new... <laughs> what is this room, then? <laughs> that room is for you to greet... Uh, guests and to have meetings. Wow. So they mm-hmm. walk through the entire house to come to the guest room. To show it all. This is I such suppose. a beautiful home. Of course you want to See, show it to yeah. Just a Tell little her. pretend though. Tell her remedies for spices. He was specifically trying to just look for any garam masala, some fresh curry leaf, anything like that. You have some conflux spices. Oh no. Ooh, what's a conflux spice? Conflux spice. Alright, let's see. I actually have some of these. Uh, there oh, is shit. red leaf, blue root, and what looks like green scallions. Oh, he, he yips at the green scallions. Oh! Thank, thank the great one. Uh, I've been waiting for this for so long. And I'll just buy one. There's also some salt. Black salt, some pepper, different peppers as well. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, please forgive me for this, but there is a small bottle with a tiny little mural uh, of a hyena man laughing with a little hat on. <laughs> Tony <What's> Shatteries, <laughs> baby. <laughs> <laughs> you sprinkle it on a crazy person, turn him into a friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wonderful. Oh, yeah. Millie, what have you found? Uh, well, I'm hoping to find some food to go with all these spices. Well, here's where things get really cool. As you start to look mm-hmm. around for food, your, your boy will appear one more time. Where'd I put him? In I my know. bed. Did I delete him? <laughs> Did you delete him? Fucking storm I don't know where he went. I thought he was in the hallway. No, he's not there. I missed. Oh. Oh no, there he is. Okay. I found him. Oh. 
<laughs> Jella jumps up on the counter. If Whoa. you are looking for food, the home will conjure it for you. Go to here. Yeah, I said short food. And simply ask for the food you wish. It, it, it can't be that simple, can it? Really? Why not give it a try? Oh gosh. Well, now there's so many possibilities. What do I ask for, Chala? Um. Hmm. Ask for. Ooh, ooh. A loaf of fresh bread, hot from the oven. Oh. It appears in front of you. <gasps> oh, oh, wholesome. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> and, and maybe a little crock of butter? Please? It appears before you. <gasps> oh. Chala, let's have some bread. How far? Okay. It should be noted Jello. that the home has a limited number of times it may conjure food for you per day. But it should be enough for your corporeal forms. Mm. This is mighty fantastic. Just amazing. Oh, you know what would go good with this bread? Mm. Della reaches in and he says, I just want a big plate of butter chicken. And he rips it out and he smells it immediately. Eyes closed. He hasn't gotten a visual on this yet. Oh, there's butter chicken. Okay, he tries to go through all the spice profiles. Is he disappointed? Is it fully flavored? <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's more shocked, but he jumps back up on the desk and says, Oh! This magic has gone too far. I see you can. I see you seem to need more time. Please contact me when the others have awoken. We have much to discuss. Yes, sir. Too far. Too far. Then he goes to taste it. Tastes good. Oh, oh no! The, no, auto we the automation is quite haram. <laughs> it's, it's too good. I'll slice and butter a piece of bread for Chala and one for myself. Try or... some, Millie. Try some. Okay. You dip the bread in it. Use your hand. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Haven't washed up, though. Oh, it's, it's blood. It's fine. I'll take uh, <laughs> two slices of bread now instead and, and put one on each hand, and Maylie will scoop the chicken in between the bread and kind of make a soupy sandwich. Eat it. Well, you had a soupy sandwich. Do, do you taste that? Quite delicious. It's delicious. It's very cool. The art all gone. No art. Nothing left from it. Horrifying. I'm sorry you feel that way. I think it's quite impressive. Beyond impressive. But. And he leans in real close. What are we left with? What do you mean? This can make food, okay? Any food you like. What are we to do? We are left with nothing. We have no purpose in life. No goals and aspirations. We can make anything we would like. Why would we make anything? I think it's more meant to be shared. We make the things we like. We share the joy amongst ourselves. Maybe we have some friends over sometime in that lovely little guest room. And we share it. Right? It gives it some purpose then. Mm. We enjoy it for what it is. Okay. Okay. I have to think about that. Don't be looking a gift horse in the mouth. Just, you know... Accept it and, and pay it forward, kind of. Okay, you're right. you're right. Who should we feed first? Well, they all seem to be uh, still kind of unconscious, so... Let's, let's, let's go feed Seno. Uh, okay. Sharing, you said sharing, yes, Millie? Well, Je yeah, Seno but not... Isn't a, Seno's, they may not wake up for a long time. You don't know how this works, huh? Well, so we must feed them. 
They must they must be awfully hungry. It will help the eating process. Do you think I should chew it for him or I should mash his mouth together? I think <laughs> it would probably be better to try for a liquid. Like maybe we should ask for a broth of some type. What broth? So just ask the house for some. I don't know. A vegetable, a, a meat flavor. You, you, you must choose something from where you are from. Uh, I gave you a broth of chicken. Come on. This song is a Get fucking him. bop, dude. It is pretty it is. pretty sick. It's really good. This is your home theme, by the way. <gasps> oh, really? Ooh. 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 Yeah. I fucking so love true. it. Oh, dude, does it have a fucking, a fucking satire? That's hilarious. Okay. So, okay. Maybe he's going to walk up to the kitchenette and sit there and ask, um, House, could we please have some healthy type soup, something invigorating. She expects kind of like a a potato and carrot and garlic type Chicken of noodle! Broth. Ooh, chicken noodle. That'll work too. Okay. Okay, so you want me to chew the chicken for them? <laughs> uh, I think it's fine if it's in small enough chunks, Chala. This is what we used to do for our fallen brothers. To get them back, nurse them to health. I will... Uh, it's a respect to what I'm from. I think we should. It's love. All right, you. Okay. You do what floats your boat, I suppose. Inshallah, we'll take a little bit of the bread, scoop up as much of the soup as possible, chew as much as he can. Uh huh. Open up, send his mouth with his hands. And yeah. Drop it in. You, you baby bird him. Burn him. Baby bird him, and then he'll <laughs> and then he'll mash his mouth again and say, "He loves him. He loves him. Would be better so." <laughs> Sensually enough. What? Sensually enough. But he mutters it to himself a little bit. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the black infinite void of unconsciousness, Seno feels that. <laughs> yeah. he's, ha- he's having one of the dreams where he like kills everyone <laughs> and he just is in his mouth and just starts moving in the tree yeah you have to imagine him just internally screaming like what is this <laughs> if you eat in your dream you eat in real life <laughs> oh that explains why I'm so fucking bloated all the time <laughs> he, he just thinks to himself what the fuck is this why but it tastes good though <laughs> no, no, I don't want to be next. Oh, you're, you're next. Musta'ira. You're next. Tell him this, Ida. Mele? Mm. Uh, like, like a surgeon, he goes to Mele. He's like, bread? Soup? <laughs> bread. Churning? Soup? <laughs> ung, ung, ung. It, is, it is much respect to heal your brothers to the po- point of soreness. And we will take it that far, Mele. We will take it that far. Too. And it will dribble into Ira's mouth as well. Iris, he's, he's gonna just be like, oh, what the fuck? And he's gonna mildly be freaking out in his mind. Okay. Who's up next, Melee? <laughs> well, we got Luca and Effie left. Food oh. doctor and nurse Melee is, is uh, not what I expected. <laughs> what, what, is, what do you think they'd like to eat? You think everyone gets stew? You think we should mix it up? I, no, I think everyone should get stew. It's, it's probably what's gonna help their bodies most, right? Okay, okay. Besides, I'd hate for the rest of what we've made to go to waste. Well, received, I suppose. Jello walks into Luca's room. Because Luca's asleep, he'll look around, kind of nosily, kind of like, kind of like, uh, your, your, your aunt, like an aunt that's real nosy and just looks around like, hmm. But continues on, trying to hope Maylee didn't notice him do that. <laughs> <laughs> Maylee clears the throat. <coughs> I know, I know, right? <laughs> I know. It's, it's okay. so edgy. It's, it's, okay. it's, mm-hmm. it's dark in there. Yeah, it's very bright. There's a lot of light sources. Okay, okay. okay. J- Jilla, like, massages, slaps the sides of his mouth. His jaw's getting a little sore. And he's just trying to move it into place, getting ready, massaging it. Okay, okay, Millie, let's go. <laughs> he tears off another hunk of bread and hands him the ladle of soup. <laughs> <laughs> Mouth noises. He drops it. Drops it in. Baby birding him up. <laughs> okay. 
The food okay. kind of spills at the corners of his mouth, like his body is subconsciously trying to reject it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Chella will scoop it with his thumbs and drag it back into the mouth. <laughs> he oh, starts choking. No, no, no. Oh, Chella, Chella will lean him up and pat him on the back till it goes down. <laughs> his like, body like fights with all its might, but it eventually <laughs> takes hold. <laughs> <laughs> the unconscious RP is great. <laughs> Mainly lingers at the door, unsure that what she's doing is actually right, but, you know, doesn't want to offend Kala. The skull can- candles in his room embers a little bit brighter. As how, you can, how can they heal on an empty stomach, Mainly, If you can answer that question, we can stop in our tracks. How would it just waited for them to wake up and then have them eat a feast, you know? How, how are you going to know that they are going to wake up today? Maybe not I, in a week. And then they go a week with no food. What's going to happen, really? Yeah, you're right. A week with no food or water is pretty bad. Exactly. Chella <laughs> chooses. Chana catches himself in the mirror doing this. And he reconsiders his life choice. And then he realizes his life started like a week ago. And he feels a lot better about it. And then he mad <laughs> and he any baby birds, Effie. <laughs> <laughs> Effie and her subconscious starts chewing on her own. Makes little oh. happy happy noises. Oh. oh, I told you, Melee, this one's hungry. And he keeps reading her. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> God. All right. Well, if anyone, it would be Effie who would enjoy uh, food the most, I think. Good. <laughs> God, I can't wait for the fan out of this session. <laughs> he rolls over on her side. <laughs> Content. Okay, okay. I think that's everyone. Unless, mainly, mainly, unless, you want, unless you're feeling left out. And then he kind of gives, you know the, no, what was no. that one no. emo? What's that one, you know the emo with the two finger guns in, in, in Arcadem's chat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. He made him easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, easy. Just, hey, mainly, unless you're feeling left out. No, no, I'm good. Thanks. You sure? Yep. Okay. Oh, thanks, the great one. <laughs> I'll okay, find a well place I... to put the leftovers here in the kitchen, okay? Yeah. Angela goes to the goes to the food place and he reaches in and he says, Can I have some ice? What? Ice. Ice. Yeah, ice is there. And he <gasps> takes it and he just starts massaging his jaw with the ice. <laughs> oh okay. And some tea. Wow, this house really is full of luxuries. I know. And then he, he'll sit down. You're like, okay, so Mele, do you, would you like to talk for a bit? My jaw's a bit tired. Tell me, what are you thinking? What is your goal currently in this existence? Uh, that is something I have not had a lot of time to process. It's been a busy week you know now's your chance what's the first thing that comes to mind what does your soul leap to first oh uh well honestly i always wanted a house i suppose a little place of my own that was actually nice where i didn't have to work so hard for you know living you you used to work hard for a living what Mm. was that Uh, well, I don't know how much you remember, considering we just kind of sort of woke up one day about a week ago, but I remember doing a lot of not great things. I think I was, um, mostly robbing graves and the like, trying to make a living, trying to survive. It was, it was pretty rough where I was from, last thing I remember, really. Robbing graves? Uh, yeah, probably something I wouldn't have been proud of, but I, I have the feeling I was just doing what I had to. It wasn't what? out of meanness or anything or disrespect. It was just necessary. Was you stealing the bodies? Uh, Charla, I mean, yes, sometimes. Wow. Depended on what condition they were in. Absolutely. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Truly. We don't, um, where I'm from, 
We don't have coffins. We just throw people in the dirt. Let them mm. come. Let them return to nature. But you're telling me you you can gather the body later, and for what purpose? Uh, I I don't know that I feel comfortable talking about it, Charlie. Della sips his tea. Okay, okay, I see, I see, I see. Your own purposes, then. Okay. Not my purposes. I I typically gave the bodies to someone else, but what they did with them, it wasn't much nice. Oh, okay. That's um, come from a very dark place. It was rough, yeah. Mm-hmm. Here's a a lot nicer. Everything's green, and it's it's got weather, and I mean. We've got this lovely house. It's it's quite opulent. I must. It is green, but it is it is all falsehood, smoke mm-hmm. and mirrors, an illusion. So you say, yeah. Manufactured, artificial, other synonyms. <laughs> yeah, you're a funny guy. I've been told. Me, in my memory, mm. I. Don't remember any people or things. I remember sensations. The taste of butter chicken, the sensation of Sue shooting it out of the 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 enlightenment that comes with it. The 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 peace of serving the Great One. But I don't remember the Great One herself or any of those ideas. It's quite strange. A true test of faith, I think. I know I had a family. I know mm-hmm. I had a couple of friends. I don't mm-hmm. remember faces or names, personalities. I just know I loved them. And I know whatever I was doing for a job, I was doing to try and make their life better. Oh. Wanting somewhere peaceful to retire was was the goal. Okay. Well, for that... I think you're justified, really. But that is up to you. What's your goal? Exactly. What What is my goal? So, I am here. I've been reincarnated, reborn, Mm -hmm. with the promise of never dying. I remember the, 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 the freedom that felt of knowing I was immortal. And I've been brought back once again in service to the Great One. So, I must find the Great One and serve her whatever she is. I think that's my goal. Mm. Indeed. I'm, of course, that is tied up with all the things we've gotten ourselves into now, this home. Um... And, and and all these uh, travesties and devils, but I'll get there eventually. I hope. Yeah, it's it's been a lot. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Chalo, was it? Hmm. Well, I'm quite tired. I think I should retire and sleep like the rest of them. All right. If I don't yeah, wake up. I will. And if I don't wake up tomorrow, you know what to do. Blue, blue, blue. Like a baby bird. (laughs) (laughs) I'll try my best. Don't stay up too late. Right. Good night, y'all. Good night. Does Melee do anything on her lonesome? Hmm? Mm Mm-hmm. She does, actually. All right. I can't wait. I'm listening. So, she goes to her bedroom and... In her chest, she looks around, gets out her night clothes. Think lawn night dress, like kind of Victorian 1850s sort of style. She gets her journal and her candle and her pillow. And after changing clothes and putting all of her wizardry stuff back in her chest and all of her weapons, aka the crossbow, hiding safely in the chest, she takes her stuff, goes back out. To the living room. Mm. After sitting at the couch 
and writing in her journal all of the stuff that has happened in the past week. Things that could have gone a little bit better. Things that, you know, she needs to maybe try a little bit harder at to, to fit in with the group and, and be good. And, you know, just a, a list of everything. She lights the candle in front of her. And she closes her eyes to meditate. But halfway through the meditation, tears just start streaming down her face. And when it gets to be too much, she covers her face with the pillow and starts to weep. She's trying desperately hard not to wake anybody, specifically Chala, but she does need some time to grieve. Not My heart? It hurts. Oh, it hurts. It hurts. Yeah, it's deep. Dear Lord, my heart. Eventually, once the sobs stop, I don't know, it's probably been a good hour or two, and she can breathe a little bit better, she blows out the candle, picks up her stuff, and goes to bed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen, mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. As the party. Oh, wait. Think one last thing I could. Yeah, sorry. what's up? Chella, as he enters his room, if it was made to the description I gave before, he finds a big hookah pipe and he takes a big hit before going to sleep. <laughs> cool that. Wow. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, well. And so, the party falls asleep. Throughout the night, they are overwatched by their mysterious patron. And then, you awaken, fully rested, fully recovered. So everybody long rest your tokens. And fully fed. Yes. And fully fed. <laughs> oh. Um. So I'm still kind of learning every. How do you do that? How do you at do the, the at the top rest? left? There's top uh, left. Uh, is utility, and then under oh. utility there's short rest and long rest and long rest, long rest. Long rest. and then rest. rest. Yes. yes. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, Effie wakes up screaming. Mm hmm. Oh. <laughs> well, go on. <laughs> So, Maylee, you're gonna wake up to the sound of. I'm gonna get tangled in the sheets. What's wrong? What's up? Help! What? I'm on fire! I'm on fire! Put it out! Put it out! Put it out! Oh, okay. And she's like rolling around, like stop, drop, and rolling. Oh, um, I I gently hold Effie, and and Maylee tries to pat her a bit, and says, "No, no, you're okay. I got it. It's all gone. It's out." But I. Uh, is it? Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, I'm positive. I, think... I have control flames, remember? All's good. Oh, did you put it out for me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, okay. And she rolls over and goes back to sleep. <sighs> she, just, she just goes back to sleep. Man. Poor thing. It's been hard on all of us. <laughs> um, I guess this, the sudden screaming is going to wake up Ira and he's going to freak out and kind of get tangled up in his hammock and he's gonna be shuffling around and mumbling hello and he's gonna do his best to get out of it and eventually flop on the floor you hear Miley can hear a large thud he's gonna uh, he's gonna <laughs> kind of stumble up grabbing onto the nearest grabbing onto the nearest thing near him and catch his catch his legs <sighs> Hello. He's gonna look around. Howdy, you're all good. Allie? Yeah, he's gonna, yeah. He's, he's gonna stumble out of the room and. Oh, you gotta oh, click on the door lock to get out, though. There you go. He's stumble out and he's gonna look to Mally down the hallway. Uh, where are we? Well, remember how fighting the spider was gonna give us a homestead type thing? This is yeah. that house. It's it's kind of made of the spiritual webs that the spider left behind. He's going to kind of walk down the hallway, making using the wall as a way for him to support himself. 
Do you like like the room we gave you? You, Was it all good? Uh, he looks around. It was okay. I mean, I got tangled up in this hammock thing, but it was, it was pretty good. He's kind of gonna look over to his feathers and pat everything down. Uh, is everyone alive? Uh, far as, far as I know, yeah, everyone's just fine. Chala and I made sure, um, y'all were nourished and resting and I was gonna pause and, I was gonna help. pause and l- look at her and raise a brow nourished uh, wh- what do you mean uh in in simple terms we poured a little broth down your throat how did you do that Ira I think it best you don't know I know how sensitive you can be um <laughs> 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 I'm just gonna gently put a hand on her shoulder and he's gonna be like I need to know well since you insist Chala did what he thought was culturally appropriate and he uh, <laughs> basically fed you like you were a baby bird the sudden shock and just horror on Iris' face just looms over as he slowly just pushes Mally gently aside and makes his way to the nearest bathroom. <laughs> he, he doesn't know what to do as he's cupping his mouth. Bathroom RP? <laughs> uh, as, as Astra, as, by the way, I would like to imagine Chella watched this conversation, saw Melee's facial expressions, and scooted back into his room and closed the door. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna just slowly turn on, turn on the sink and just start rinsing out his mouth. Anger is just filling him as he realizes that he was baby bird fed by Chala. And he's, he's just gonna. He's, Pieces he's, of bread? And, a stew? No. Nice. Just, climb, it, just clean that out of your teeth right there. Yep, he's gonna clean out his mouth, making sure it's all nice and clean before coming back out and taking a breath as he sits down on the couch, waiting for Chala to wake up. Sorry about that, Ira. I tried to suggest other possibilities, but um, well, you know how headstrong Chal is. He didn't really listen too terrible much. It's, it's fine. It's okay. okay. I'm just going to okay. wait for him right here. All right. Down. I think I'm going to go wash up, all right? <laughs> Ira nods and he's, as he kind of clasps his hands together. Quite Maybe amazing. takes her wizard clothes from the you know, chest, and then goes straight to the bathroom and shuts the door. <laughs> Seno, like, wakes up in shock. He's like, uh, uh, huh? <laughs> and he's, like, completely confused as he wakes up in a room <laughs> in a bed and, like, falls out of it and is like, why do I taste soup? What? Huh? <laughs> And, like, basically completely confused, he's, like, like going to to the desk he sees, and he's like, oh, finally a notebook. And then he starts scribbling notes down on the, down on the notebook. After hearing all the commotion from outside, uh, Luca gets up, has a strange taste in his mouth, and doesn't feel comfortable about that, uh, looks around the room and realizes that he's unfamiliar. He gets up groggily and heads towards the door and seeing, oh, I can't, I can't leave. Okay, now I can. Uh, and sees Ira, the first person he sees. Does, does he see Chala in the corner? No, I type sneak in chat so you can't see me. <laughs> 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 Iris is gonna look to Luca and he's gonna just raise a hand and wave hello. He's not very happy right now. Uh, Luca nods in greeting and quietly just looks about the area and questions. Where are we? Well, he takes a breath. Uh, remember the spider? Well, we killed it. I, I think. And it gave we us this home. It? Yeah. I think we did. We're not dead. So we're in the spider. Yeah. He kind of trails off on that, kind of now realizing that they're inside the spider, he thinks. 
a chill runs down his spine and he tries to find a bathroom <laughs> and tries this one and knocks on the door. Oh, just like a few more minutes, okay? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll just look around. And he just kind of walks around, turn the corner and sees Chala just <laughs> at the hallway. Do, do you actually see me? I mean, you're not covering yourself. <laughs> you didn't do a stealth roll. Ch 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 Chalas, uh, he would do that thing in Mission Impossible where the dude like does a split at the top of the ceiling. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Um, Luca doesn't question that and just goes into the next room. <laughs> <laughs> you see him fully, but he's like, that's so much more funny. <laughs> and looks at this door, or knocks doesn't hear anything, and walks in. Or try to. Okay, now walks in. And closes the door. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, the bathroom RP. Bathroom RP, guys. Okay. <laughs> Is there a mirror in this room? <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, oh. cool. Um, in closing the door, Luca looks at himself in the mirror and examines himself and looks at his skin. You see a little make... stain on the corner of your mouth. <laughs> he wipes at that and gets in the sink and just rinses his mouth because he just feels gross all of a sudden. A couple of chicken and chops. Do... Uh, uh. <laughs> he tries not to... The, a wave of nausea just falls over him and he tries not to vomit. And looking at himself back in the mirror... I'm going to make a d20 roll. And now the DC is lowered to 13. Uh. Oh, Ooh. shit. In that moment, Luca touches his head, his temples, and feels that there are no longer horns there. He touches the small of his back and doesn't feel the tail that was once there. He looks at his feet, no longer hooved, and he fully understands that now he was not what he once was. He was a tiefling, blue skin, orange eyes like embers, were gone and replaced with tan skin, curly hair, and very humanistic features. He doesn't know what happened or why he was in, in this body to begin with. But the more he focuses on himself, the more he tries to remember who he once was. Another d20 roll. Mm. Mm. Nine. He couldn't quite remember who he was. He felt like his purpose is missing. But he understood that his being is not what it once was, and it's something new. And as he examines himself further, even with the week that had passed, and he couldn't focus since they were on the run and trying to survive... He looks down his pants. Is it a D20 or D12 roll? Oh my, all right, <laughs> oh my God, all, all right, all right, right. <laughs> all right, I'll do it. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> oh, oh my oh, God. Oh. Holy shit. <laughs> my man packing. He's packing. Luca, Luca looks down his pants. And he thinks to himself, whose fucking horse is that? And he realizes <laughs> he's the horse. He's the horse? Holy he shit. anxiety courses in him and <laughs> not shit. understanding and understanding such little of who he was runs to the toilet and starts vomiting everything. Like he's full on puking. <laughs> 
You have such a big dick, you moment, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a wild dis- that's a wild response. So, I mean, he's the- in shock. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm pausing there, letting everybody else do their thing while this is happening. So, Effie finally wakes up and she looks around the room, a little bit confused, but content because she, you know, has this big old bed over here. And so she finally puts her feet on the ground and stands up and kind of pats her her tummy being like, "Ooh, I feel quite full." And she walks <laughs> over she walks over the vanity and takes a look at herself for a long time in the mirror. And really is starting to get an understanding of the gravity of the situation that they're in and the fact that she's no longer a changeling and is a human in a really sad realization. Um, She takes a look at a journal that is strategically placed over here, and she's all of a sudden super happy to have a diary that she can gossip in, and picks up the the diary and um, kind of steps back and sits on the bed and starts doodling and making the front cover her own. And I have a surprise (laughs) on what the journal doodle is. Oh my god. And check (laughs) DMs, Arcadum. Oh my god. No way. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god. Is it your MS Paint drawing of Jello? Yes. And so she just sits there doodling a bit on her uh, on her diary and starts writing about the oh, I experiences. Muted. I was muted. I, I popped. Oh, no. You popped. <laughs> I popped. <laughs> and um, you know, writes about her experiences with her uh, with the party and about how she originally was only with them for survival, but is now kind of making friends with everyone. And she. Uh, Oh, before she steps out, she changes into her house clothes out of her sweaty and gross leather outfit into a long feathery robe. And she uh she casually strolls out. Uh, he's gonna notice Effie and he's gonna kinda kinda smile. He likes the robe. <laughs> Very nice, looking gorgeous. He kinda comments and catches Thank himself. Thank you. I got the feathers from you. Well, not really, but it was an inspiration. Why, thank you. And she turns and she knocks on the bathroom door. Maybe opens the door and, oh, here. You can have it. I'm all done. Thank you. She walks in and she uh, happily gets in the bathtub to wipe off all the spider slime. All right. You'll notice... Maylee is freshly showered, um, wet hair and everything, but she's still in her night clothes. She has taken the liberty of dunking her regular clothes in the tub to clean them and is going to hang them up in front of the fireplace to dry. Hopefully, this is a fireplace, right? Yep. Oh, great. And I'm assuming this bath water we can just replace. Uh, well, like as a... you step into it, it replaces itself and heats itself. Ooh. Oh, my God. Holy wow. Crap. What? What, the fuck? Fuck? <laughs> what is this magic? <laughs> Ira's gonna. I told she you says that. Be worth it. She says oh. that out loud. What is this magic? <laughs> and she doesn't question it and fades. Ira's gonna kind of look at Molly and ask, Have you seen uh, Chala anywhere? Uh, 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 well, not since last night, no. As you say that, Jalo walks out. Kind of trying to be just completely nonchalantly, <laughs> just in his sandals. <laughs> nonchalantly. I was gonna yeah. kind of look at Chala. It's it's like a, it, it's like he's pissed. He's angry. He's upset. Ch- he's, he's gonna he's gonna get up. Chala gonna... smiles at Ira. By the way, Chala has nothing on but like a like a tiny loin. <laughs> <laughs> you can see his whole thing. His jug. He just has sandals on the tiny loin coat. Ira's not even going to care. He's looking at his face, doesn't care what he's packing. 
And he's just gonna start walking over. Oh, hi, Ida. And Jolla has in his hand the short sword he used to kill the spider. Hi, Ida. I had a gift for you. He's gonna kind of look down at the short sword and look back up to him. <laughs> yeah, I bet he does. It- and then he then, <laughs> and he puts the short sword down and he's like, is that I was another? Gonna, is that another? Gonna notice, he's going to notice and he's going to be like, awkwardly, just slowly look back up to him. Thanks. And it's still quite angry and he's going to ask quietly, did you spit in my mouth? Spit? No. But it had spit in it, Right. In my in my experience, <laughs> it isn't spit at that point. It's love. I don't. <laughs> he's just gonna he's just gonna sigh and slowly and put his hand on a uh, child's shoulder and gently squeeze. Please do not ever spit in my mouth again. I didn't know when you'd awaken. You may have never healed if I never gave you nutrients. He's just gonna nod and pat his pat his shoulder. Now, can you raise that short sword, you know, a little bit above um <laughs> your private area? I'm, I'm <laughs> you know what you're right. You're right, Ida. I haven't done my morning alignments. In there's no there's no good water around as far as I know. Yeah, Ira's gonna ask again quietly. Can you please raise it above your private area so I may inspect it? I don't want to look at your uh, tools. (laughs) (laughs) Tools. Tools. Funny. Okay, so he flicks around the blade in his hand. It's a short sword. He can do like some one-handed tricks with it. It's not like a a regular short sword. It's a bit more... It's only only one side is sharp and it has some ridges through it. Like a... I forget the word. Rip, ripples, ripple the blade. Where it's serrated? Like Not serrated. It has waves. Mm. It has the waves in it. Oh, I know. What you mean. Yeah, yeah. I forget the word. There's a specific sword word. Anyway, it has waves across one side. And he says, Ida, I don't mean to disrespect your attempts earlier in the fight, but um, you missed a lot. <laughs> I'm just gonna kind of look offended. And he's you missed a lot. Hey, hey. When it comes down to brass tacks, you have to accept it. Let's be frank. You missed quite a bit. He's just gonna sigh and awkwardly nod. He, I suppose ta- so. He'll tap Ida on his grab with his free hand. He'll grab Ida on his shoulders and stop pressing it. He's like, "You have these big shoulder pads, but we now know you don't have the arms to swing a sword like that, Ida." It's just, it's just the case. He's gonna. Kind of look offended at that, that's, and and, and 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 kind of step back awkwardly. He's like, uh, at, at some right. point, all heads must bow, all tongues must confess. Okay, we're not built the strongest. Neither am I. Okay, I'm I'm four foot five. I can't dunk. You can't use that sword. It's fine. And then I will <laughs> hand him this sword. <laughs> Try this one. I'm sure it would work better for you. I was going to take the sword and just... In shame, he's going to accept it. I suppose. Thank thank you. Thank, thank you. And he's kind of going to step away before he awkwardly, like, stepping away from looking at him. Please don't spit in my mouth again. Thanks. And, and as, I, as Ira turns around to say, don't spit in my mouth again, uh, they'll see Jella turned around, butt cheeks flexed. He's just gonna. gonna, (laughs) Head head over his shoulder. Oh, what was that? (laughs) I'm just gonna gonna cover his eyes. Your ass is showing. And he's gonna kind of walk towards the restroom and and gently knock on the door. You want to blame me? This is what Namalos left me. Holy shit. This is what Namalos wanted, right, big guy? And then he'll tap the house. All right, now I'm supposed to respond. I'm in. He's gonna. Do... Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, there he is, the boy. You have summoned me. It seems oh, that you're no. all awake. Yeah. 
I was yes, going to jump back and realize Goo Guy's there. What's Same happening way. out there? Uh, Namos is here. Ooh! She um, finishes <laughs> washing up and like come out naked. Please don't come out naked. <laughs> well, kind of like you know how a girl gets ready for a date. She like holds up her clothes to herself and looks in the mirror and like straightens her hair a little bit and then puts on her uh, her feathered robe back on and comes on out. Yeah, and you'll see. Thanks, wingman. <laughs> No problem. Ooh, this is spicy. Good. And you see Chella yeah. complaining to Namalos. Like, eh, why did you just leave me this? And he's like pulling at it. Just, <laughs> just, <laughs> just completely <laughs> revealing himself. What are you doing, Namalos? There are clothes prepared for you. Did you not I see must, them? I must have missed them. I see her. Chella walks back to his Where's room. the other one? Uh, Sena will, will, like, put on finally some clothes because he realizes he's naked indeed. <laughs> and then he comes on after he's, he hears a lot of mumbling outside. You see that on the clothes were beneath the hookah pipe. Oh. As he go, he's like, oh, I would never have <laughs> caught that. And then he grabs it. Dick check. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, they want me to. All right. Can I also do a dick shake? God, fine! Okay, okay, wait, hold up. Okay, can I use my, can I use my birthday 20 on this? No. no. Yes. <laughs> Alright, this is for Chala. Oh, dude, for oh being, I, for being That's as foot, tall as be, he is. For being four foot nothing, dude, that's crazy. Alright. That's insane. This is for Sano. Oh, Sage. Yes. Iron's dude, eight inches is not is sedge, so dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> Irrespectable. <laughs> Holy crap. You want me to oh, row yeah. for Luke? And you want, like, Ira too? Like, you want me to row? No. Okay. Ira's, he hasn't, no. He hasn't, he hasn't, like, in, clean, he hasn't cleaned off his clothes yet. He's, he's still in his armor. He's, he's gonna clean it. So he's gonna kind of creep into the restroom, keeping the door open so he can hear everything that's going on. Luca, uh, can I make a perception oh. check to hear Luca in the bathroom? Sure. Sure. <laughs> Door's okay. closed, so. But you're you're all out vomiting, so. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't hear. Okay. Can I try as well? Sure. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> Too busy being impressed with your penis. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Oh. <laughs> But um, Luca finishes emptying his guts and goes back to the sink, rinses his mouth, and freshens up a little bit, and exits exits the room and sees everyone congregating in the living room. I just realized something, and I feel so fucking. Stupid. All right, say what? it. What? No, no, Hello? dude. I say, can't. It. I say, can't. It. say it. Say it. Say it. Okay. Say I it. Will it get you in trouble? I, That's the question. I don't think so. It's just if you look at the uh, the penis rolls, <laughs> the darker the skin, the bigger the teeth. <laughs> 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 I don't know how it rolled out like that, dude. <laughs> it actually rolled out like that, bro. <laughs> Yo, oh, <laughs> at least we're keeping it real and complex. Yeah. We we keeping Sorry. it real in here, bro. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Jesus God. Christ, dude. <laughs> Effie oh, looks man. around the party and she's like, "Did anybody else feel really full this morning?" And she <laughs> again pats her tummy. Her like, in, in, a, in a way you wouldn't imagine. In a way you wouldn't imagine. <laughs> <laughs> well, explain it to me. If I can't imagine it. Oh god. <laughs> That's comedy. That's fucking comedy right there. You can't yeah. she, I, she she's staring um, at Chala uh, waiting for him to respond. Well you this is the first time we got to witness our bodies, yes? 
in full effect. We've been running this entire time. We had tomatoes. We had time for the first time ever. Oh. It's different to how I remember or expected. <laughs> I was just going to kind of cringe a little bit at the fact of Effie saying she was quite full and goes back to taking off his robes and preening his feathered, his feathered cape as he, as he listened quietly. All right. Seeing as how you're all gathered, Namalos will clap his hands. Well then, now that you're all gathered, awake, no longer dead, we have many things to discuss. Can you hear me in there? And Iris gonna nod. I can hear you just fine, sir. Good. Listen well. You have passed a sufficient amount of trials to be considered true candidates. And so, your path from here on out will be determined by the Spiritorium. And I shall be your guide through this process. Now, you may have many questions as to what the spirits are, and to who I am. I will attempt to answer all of these questions to the best of my ability. You have them. Ask them. You said before that you were like me and came from Calcutash. How did you get here? It is difficult to say. Technically speaking, I was summoned here. Magical conjuration. Although, that is also not entirely accurate, as my body was transported here first. How it was transported... I suspect by ship during the year, during the week of peace, but to be completely honest, I do not know. The best that I can tell you is that I woke up here having been from Calcutash. When is the week of peace? You are from Calcutash and you know not of the week of peace? Time is a little muddied here. You're not wrong about the week of peace occurs at the beginning of each year. It is a time of celebration and honoring of the seven and their sacrifices. It is a time when all forces in the world seek peace, even those of primal or evil purposes. It is also the only time in which the great leviathans are made dormant and the abyssal ocean may be crossed. The other continents visited and trade possible. It is an important time. What? Where are we in the year here? We are currently nearing the end of summer. Interesting. It seemed a little hot out. Yes, but I am afraid that it is going to get much worse. For while you have journeyed into the Spiritorium and been lost in the wilderness, several things have occurred throughout the continent. The ship has been assaulted. The engine of life has been awakened. And the spheres have been damaged. Sorry, did you say ship? Indeed. Ah, that is right. You are ignorant of such things. The entirety of this place in which you walk upon <laughs> This continent, a realm of land, is in fact one enormous ship in the world of Maltos. A ship? Like a boat? In an extremely simplified sense, yes, but it is far more than that. The great vessel, known as Conflux, was one of many seeding vessels colonization vessels, you see, that were sent out from Maltos during the fall of Maltos as a desperate attempt to maintain the Taladonic order. As such, these seeding vessels found various realms in which they may plant themselves. We are currently in the phasial change of this vessel from a mobile ship into a continent. Hence, why the I guess you might call it 
inconsistent awakenings of the individuals that live here have occurred so haphazardly and with such great time intervals in between. Some are simply descendants of those that had awoken too early, but some have awakened too late to find their family gone. But we were somebody else before. Indeed, and thus, the malfunction. You and your companions being awoken in your bodies is a malfunction. Something that should not have occurred. The vessels that you inhabit were people. People that came from Maltos, or perhaps one of the other realms under its lineage. And you have found yourself here in these bodies that do not belong to you. Most interesting. It is something that I intend to investigate while you perform the tasks of the Spiritorium. Perhaps I can find the reason why, although I do have a few theories, one of which would explain some things, and that is the realm of conflux is cut off from the great dream. How do you go about this research? What does that entail? Do you have a library of sorts you go to? It is knowledge that I have. For when I was summoned here, it was taught to me. Taught to you by whom? Alright. Get out your notepads. Oh, Ooh. shit. Oh, God. <laughs> Wait a second. I'm ready. Strap it. I'm up. Pencil loaded. Oh, I'm strapping in. Maylee goes to grab her journal from the bedroom. <laughs> Effie already has hers, and she kind of like proudly shows off the cover. Well, what's what's the cover look like? Show them the cover. Oh. <laughs> it's in it's in fan art. If you want to go look. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll show it at the end of stream. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> and Ira's gonna kind of hear that, that question. He's gonna kind of get the indication it's, it's time for him to come on out. So he's gonna stroll out and only wearing whatever undershirt he had and kind of sit on the ground in front of it. <laughs> you saw the cover. That's fantastic. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. All right. It's going to happen. I'm ready. Ready. Yep. Maybe looks at Novelist with anticipation. I was taught these things by Malintherius, one of the Council of Maltos. Specifically, I was informed of such things as my body was being reconstituted into the form that it is now. I am an experimental form of the angelic beings known well. They are called angels, but they are not celestials as you might think of them. They are more like thoughts given physical form, made of light. Whereas I am made out of something else. Malantherius explained it that this new prototype of angel would simply be called night angels. As I am made of darkness. Or at least that is how it was explained. I have studied my form as much as possible. And I have discovered that it is more likely that it is some sort of protoplasmic, sort of metallic material. I can manipulate it to near perfect degrees, and yet I can never fully form myself. Strange. But enough about me. Malantherius informed me of such things, and indeed, I was tasked to assist. Primus at the Aperture. You might call them my light, my light angel counterpart.
Can you tell us just a little bit more about um, this Primus fellow, please? Primus is... The, well, Primus is one of the angels that runs the great systems within the Conflux to make the ship operate. Specifically, he was the captain's personal angel to assist with all administration processes and also patrolling the phasing of the ship. It is the wheel at the center of it all that once it stopped turning, everything came to ruin. I have been disconnected from Primus for quite some time, locked away in the Spiritorium, seeking those worthy mages that wish to ascend. He asks, what is the Aperture? The Aperture is a realm high in the mountains you might see them as, where the administration buildings can be found. It is at the center of the complex. And Ira's gonna kind of. Is that where you were sending us? Eventually. My plan was to send you there, yes. It is my hope that we will be able to assist Primus and to moving forward the phases. This malfunction must be corrected. Ira's gonna kind of look down and uh, just wonder so so if this is some sort of ship is there other places out there besides just whatever we're on now? Of course. I believe initial indications revealed that there were seven continents upon the world we currently reside in. Other than our own. Do you know what those other continents are? I possess the navigational data, yes. Is this ship that we're on affecting any of those other continents, or is it only affecting this countryside where we are right now? Difficult to say. I have been cut off from the Index for quite some time. But, I suspect that there is at least a marginal effect. There will certainly be an effect whenever the ship finishes its phasing and we come to the point of Leylenic interference. What are the phases? The phases, they, they are the phasing of the ship from vessel to full continent. The phases are Seeker, Se Seeding, Atlas, Loom, and Binding. We are currently in the middle of the Atlas phase. So it just seems like the phases are stuck. Indeed. Hence why there must be something wrong with Primus, as he is the one that dictates the passage of the phases. What will happen in the Loom and Binding phases? When the Atlas phase is complete, then all denizens should be awakened, animals summoned, and vegetation mm, discombobulated for optimal, natural continuance. During the Loom phase, the ley line shall be reacclimated to that of Conflux, and as much possible mana redirected. This process can take some time and may have interference from the other continents who do not understand the, let us call it, efficiency of such a decision. And then, in the final phase, binding, the Leylenic energy shall be sent back towards Maltos, making the connection, sanctioning it, and forever binding this world to that of Maltos. This will provide for instantaneous or near instantaneous travel to and from the world for the Taladon, as well as a sharing of all the Lelenic men amongst the entirety of the Maltosian Empire. 
Mr. Nomalos, I might be a little confused, but I thought you said that Maltos was failing, which is why the ships were sent out. What good does it do to reconnect? I mean, isn't that counterproductive? You see, it was the very purpose of these vessels to be sent out in order to save Maltos, and indeed every other planet and world that depends on Maltos. Okay. And Namalos, if I may ask, what is your feeling towards this? What would would you like uh, Primus to start to spin the aperture again? Of course. We cannot be stuck between the phases. This will cause enormous undue suffering to everyone therein. There will be those that will never awaken, their bodies faded and forgotten, their souls etched away eroded over time of their pseudo-existence. Those that have awoken too early, that were never able to fulfill their purpose, and will be forgotten by the generations brought on. And those that will awaken too late in order to be with their families. This malfunction has already cost many people much, and has already caused madness, as you have seen through your journeys throughout the land. Order must be restored. So two more things, yeah? So you wish for this planet to be reconnected with Maltos? It is not what I wish. It is simply what the Tapadani wish. And it is my job to see that their wishes are fulfilled. Okay. Um, Shalaz a bit raises a single eyebrow like his, um, like his little Tuki does. Okay. Okay. And you mentioned in the loom phase, redirecting the ley lines of magic, what I would call the spiritual essence of the planet. You want to redirect it all to conflux, and you mentioned the natives having a problem with this and its lack of efficiency, he does with air quotes. Well, you see, that's the very thing. And your use of a mocking quotation only ferments that there are those with more primal beliefs that do not understand how the energy actually works. For you see, Maltos has done this with several worlds, and all of those worlds are for the better for doing so. Leylenic energy increases its capacity and output the more energy there is. So a planet that is deficient in mana, and a planet that is healthy in mana, will both in and of themselves suffer and prosper as Nature may have it, but if they were to be shared amongst a third planet, all of that Leylenic mana would then create the capacity that both planets shall have more. Mm, But uh, with these both planets having more, is that distributed evenly? And what does the what does the Leylenic mana? Uh, happened with the third planet. What happened? The third yeah. planet, being Maltos in this case, uses the mana to enforce all of the laws that are required, and indeed to increase its own, uh, shall you say, advancement, so that more planets can be involved. The Taladani are not ashamed of the fact that they benefit greatly from the use of this mana. But the point is, it is given back to the planets that have little and even those that have lots. In the end, a rising tide raises all ships. You didn't answer the distribution question. Distribution is handled on a case-by-case basis, depending on how much mana output that the world has, and whether or not it can be successfully transferred. Each world is unique, and one formula does not fit them all. Ah, and as these people here are very primal, how would they be treated in the system? The people of this world are regulated to a technological advancement level of seven. They are not primal in the, I suppose you might call it, diminutive sense. They would be quite useful, but they do not have the advanced understanding of mana and its distribution and use as we do. Therefore, they must be taught. Ignorance, however, 
is a great enemy and will fester in those that have belief structures that allow ignorance to thrive. And they will, of course, resist any that challenge their beliefs. It is an unfortunate side effect of advancement, but one that is thankfully temporary. Okay. That all sounds fantastic to me. Anybody else have questions? Chandler goes and sits down. I have a couple for you, Nomalos. You mentioned something called an index and that you've been cut off from it for a while. What is the index? The index, or a index, is simply a tool to connect to the main matrix network of the Teladonia which is a compendium of knowledge, skills, power, and mana altogether. As I have been cut off from it for some time, I have not been updated on any changes that have occurred, hence my confusion with the current state. So where do we find an index to get you connected to? A very good question. I believe that the easiest way for you to find one is to prove yourself worthy to the Spiritorium. Doing so would allow us to access the module located within the Great Tome, which will no doubt lead to an index, or at least a connection with the Matrix. I suppose we could also find one. He nods. And or, a third option, you could risk the great and perilous journey to the Aperture. We might beseech Primus directly. You mentioned before we um, challenged the spider that you needed help restoring your, your true form. Indeed. Is that where we would do that, too? Correct. My form cannot be completed, for I have disconnected. She nods. So, you also mentioned something about some spheres? Indeed. It happened while you slept. One of the great spheres, an administrative sphere, one that controls the forces of nature within the conflux, has been greatly damaged, possibly completely destroyed. I do not know, as I am not connected to the Matrix. But the flux storms will get worse because of it. Great. Um, and there's nothing we can do about that? Unfortunately, I see no way to get us there. For the sphere in question floats far above us. And so... It seems like traveling to the Aperture is not going to be an easy feat. It will be quite perilous, especially now with the spheres in disarray. Not impossible, but dangerous. I was going to kind of uh, wonder. The second option, you said continue with the Spiritorium. Uh, can you let us know more about these spirits? I, from my knowledge, they all want to be fought. Is there not any that we can help in a more calm manner? Not all I don't of them enjoy being set on fire. Not all of them offer combat as their test. Some have alternative methods. But it should be noted that the purpose of the Spiritorium is to test new mages to enter the Taladonic structure of hierarchy. So, no matter what, the spirits will test you. That is their purpose. And I am simply there as a guide to your tests, and to also ensure that no nefarious methods were used. I am not a mage. Why I am I... I can understand your uh, confusion. Not all that take the test need to be mages in order to be considered. Or perhaps you are assisting a candidate to become one. He will turn his gaze towards Melee. Well, I would hate to get there on the coattails of someone else, honestly. I mean, but 
she just kind of mumbles under, you know, and covers her face with her hair. The creature will smile. What would, what would that entail for somebody like Maylee? If you all work together and complete the Spiritorium, not only will Maylee and any amongst you that have sufficient magical potency be allowed to ascend to a Taladonic mage, but you will be gifted a staff, depicting one of such a rank, and you'll gain access to the vast array of magical privileges that are afforded as such. And those of you that possess no magic will instead be considered worthy to ascend to a sovereign state. What's a sovereign state? Uh, a, a state of sovereignty. Those that, those that serve <laughs> at the same level as the Taladonic mages, but are not magical in and of themselves, are referred to as sovereigns. And they, being worthy enough, may govern the day-to-day uh, utterances and movements of the, of the people of confluence. I suppose a Calcateshian example would be a lordly knight or a warrior king. He nods. Center oh. nods. So, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, there is also the third option, that if your skills are not necessarily geared towards combat, if you prove yourself useful enough in this trial, you may instead choose the ascension of Scion. Hmm. Okay. And what the, does this imply? Scions are beings of great knowledge, of specific skills. Perhaps ones not quite towards warfare or magic, but others, such as crafting, or perhaps farming, and other okay. skills. Nice. You, you mentioned two things I would like to ask. Firstly, um, you mentioned that you would you were early on in that speech, first one, you mentioned this ascension that you and Primus and the ship is doing. That is just this loom and then binding process you described, yes? Yes, those are the next two phases. We are currently in the Atlas phase. And this, and this is called the Ascension? Uh, no, no. The Ascension is for individuals. This is simply oh. what Conflux was designed to do. And you were after this Ascension? My personal purpose is to have myself fully restored, and my purpose as the caretaker of the Spiritorium finished, so that I may continue my journey. Oh, so that's how you got stuck with this job. Correct. <laughs> okay, okay, I was wondering that. I was like, ghost guy, goo guy, pretty face, skillful, magical. How do you get stuck with a job like this? Looking after snakes and spiders? Okay. Question for you, Anomalous. Yes. When we when we first talked to you, we mentioned the will of Dezaki. And you mentioned that we could not help both parties. Dezaki mentioned that they help somebody on the Council of Mal Maltos as well? Dezaki was a... Or is... I'm uncertain of that. But in either case, they are a compassionate soul. They served as such on the Council of Maltos. But if you wish to walk the path of the Spiritorium, Malantherius will be the Taladonic Lord that you will follow, whether you mean to or not. Uh -huh. oh, okay, so you came from Calcatesh, you got zapped, and then um, Mal Malantheris put you back together, where is, and they are from Maltos, and now you want to go back to, you want to connect us to Maltos. I wish to be restored to my full form, so that I may continue my journey. My job is to ensure that those that take the test of the Spiritorum ascend properly and with guidance. And the goal of Malantherius and Primus, or at least the last that I know of, was to complete the phasing of Conflux, so that its connection to Maltos might be completed. Okay, two things with that. What is your journey? 
and th that you you mentioned and this this Malanthius individual are they still around? I should hope so. And as for my personal journey, I am not comfortable sharing that with you at this mm. time. You must gain more heart to unlock that dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take on a quest. Damn, I picked he the winks. wrong option in the dating sim. I picked the wrong option. <laughs> I'm going to have yeah. to give him at least three chocolates to make that up. But Maybe yes. I should try. Freaking hard oh, to see over here. Maybe I should, <laughs> I don't know, give him some food. Man, I'm excited for next week. Oh, <laughs> oh this is sick. So, another question for you. You said going through the Spiritorium quest or test um, would restore the dream. Indeed, that is my suspicion. For when I was first assigned to the Spiritorium, I asked many questions, as you have asked questions of me. And it was explained to me by Melantherius that he did not believe that the lack of access to the dream was a good thing. In fact, that is why I and others of my kind were created. The Night Angels, you see. We are supposed to act as a medium that, if completed, would allow access to the great dream. However, I am uncertain as to how the Spiritorium is supposed to accomplish this. It was simply explained that it would, should any be worthy enough to complete it. Have you completed it thus far? No. Okay. So, does... So, how does opening up the dream help the, the, us get back to Maltos? Does it affect the um, the loom or the binding in any way? I think you have misunderstood. It is my wish to have the Spiritorium complete so that I can be made whole, so that I might freely inquire as to why the phases have been disrupted. I can do nothing on my own, for I am bound to this test. Mm -hmm. If the test is not completed, I do not have my freedom. Which oh. is why I must use proxies, such as yourselves. Oh. I, I guess my question was, why does um, the creator of the Night Angels, Malanthrius, want, want people to be able to connect to the dream? I do not know. An excellent question. One that, when I asked, he said it would simply be a better world. Unfortunately, the Council of Maltos can be quite frustratingly vague. He nods, remembering vaguely about dreaming on Calcatash. So, uh, it's... You said that the path to uh, Primus would be a dangerous path since the complex storms has been increased in danger. What? So, do we have any other option to go anywhere? Or should we even go anywhere? Uh, since, like, one of our plans is to finish the Spiritorium and stuff? Do you have like any like other options of plans we could attend to go to or follow? As I said, your choices are, as I laid them out, completing the Spiritorium, seeking an index of your own accord, or traveling to the Aperture. All of these options may complete the same thing. Our, our house. Is that able to travel with us if we do decide to go to the Aperture? Of course. Why don't we carry it with us? When you are done using it and exit it, 
It will revert into a small pouch that one of you can carry on your belt. Okay. Okay. Character, I wink to the group. So if we unpouch it, it like creates a whole house in the open field? Yes, be careful where you put the house up. It may be damaged if placed in an inappropriate area. What happens if something, you know, happens to the pouch? Like the pouch gets muddy or wet or... It is immune to such temperature things as too hot, too cold, or wet, but it can be destroyed. So I would suggest that you use caution. What can destroy it? Magical disruption, a powerful enough attack. He nods. A rust monster. So, Mr. Nomalos, earlier when we were about to fight the spider, or just after, you mentioned that we weren't necessarily strong enough to take on the other guardian spirits. Uh, are we perhaps strong enough now? How are we going to be able to complete that if... He will take a long moment to look at you, and then he will nod to himself. You will be strong enough, for you have proven yourselves worthy of more strength. You are all level three. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Clap. Sweet. All right. So, so Navalos essentially claps his hands and emanates with his own strength into each of you. Ooh. Hot. Jenna oh. stops clapping back and hopes everyone else does. <laughs> Iron claps very awkwardly. Okay, just smiles. Freedom. Claps for free. Santa also smiles. So, so what's next on the on the list? So we either do the spiritorium. No, I meant on the the spiritorium oh. list. What's Ooh. next? Which guardian should we take on next? Oh. I think. Thinking the exact same oh, thing. Yeah. There's no insect. I thought they were all vermin of some sort. Say no, you did fine against a spider. Vermin? Insect. Probably gonna be okay. The did snakes. you see how I got burned to crisp three times? Uh, but look, you're alive. Exactly. I got you were too. swallowed. You were swallowed by a snake and you're still alive. You got burnt mm-hmm. three times and you're still alive. You're becoming like Chella. You're that not able to die. Mean that I challenge yeah. my faith. <laughs> You're becoming unkillable. Indeed, you are. Yep. Saino raises an eyebrow, stems a step back. It's kind of like when you when you break a bone and it repairs and it's stronger. Mm, that's how it works. And that's if, how it works. Mm-hmm. And if you wish to walk further along my path, let me know. It shall be done. So, Navalos, since we're (laughs) (laughs) fully wrecked, mate. He's fully (laughs) wrecked. Oh, fuck. Since we're in that, we're all in the house right now, is there just a pouch sitting outside? The outside is an an enormous web. Oh. So, if we're all inside. And somebody comes across this enormous web. Can they just, like, set the web on fire? They can try. <laughs> oh. Oh. Is I this see. where your not a protection kind of takes effect? I am able to you... protect the home, yes. That's Ooh. reassuring. Two cannibals tried to enter. Oh. Oh! Oh, gee, what's oh. outside? <laughs> I was gonna kind of raise the brow at that. Are is are they still outside? Oh no. <laughs> okay, he's he's gonna They're gone. Now, I will see them. 
He does not answer. Mr. Anomalous, uh, you mentioned smiles. that storms in the complex were going to get a little bit worse. Uh, is the house able to weather those storms well enough? It is my hope. It's our best shot. Is there any other way to travel to this aperture than how we're traveling now? Perhaps if we have access to such methods. But as of now, only your feet will guide you. Are there rewards in the Spiritorium that would ease our path to another location? Do you not have a little list or something you could give us of (laughs) perhaps which guardian goes with which reward? Indeed. But only the next challenge. You do not get to know what lies ahead. I see. Well, um, may we know the next challenge? Just so we can prepare for it? I shall conjure them for you. Uh, that doesn't mean we have to complete it now, does it? No, of course not. Oh, good. Wait, 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 wait. wait. You will have to underneath. fight all of them at once. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, my oh, God. God. <laughs> <laughs> boss in the house. <laughs> That's fucking lit, dude. Jella quickly grabs from underneath here some cookies and milk and pulls back up to the desk. He's like, okay, I'm ready now. <laughs> What's it, Chala? Toss me one of those. Yeah? You uh, no, like, throw it over. Out a combat right. Oh, How did you do that? Oh, I'll show you in a moment. Uh, but but in the meantime, Jala throws a cookie to everyone like it's a shuriken. She opens her mouth and catches it in her mouth. Iris Sano does, fumbles <laughs> it Iris does the same. Same thing as Epi. He looks at Epi and like, uh, like, uh, like, fuck yeah, fist. He winks. Look at that hits his face and then he picks it up. <laughs> Iris notices the winks and has a slight blush. Sano is like completely like <laughs> he he shocks like he's a complete fear. He jump scares. Oh, what what? <laughs> Thumbs it all over like on the ground, and he's like, "Well, okay." Which I'll like, toss you another one. It's okay. Wait, can <laughs> magical ground even get dirty? It's okay. It's it's mm-hmm. fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's magic. We haven't even walked around this house. So how we, how is the floor dirty? Exactly. It's fine. Eat it off the ground, Tony. <laughs> Off the ground. <laughs> he 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 picked it up. He 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 is going to eat it from the ground. <laughs> uh but, and we will do this every time we get a new announcement from Nominus. But Nominus, okay, we are dying with anticipation. Give us the little wheel. You see, Satan with a really tiny pen in his hand. His hand is just way too big for his pen, and like a tiny notebook. <laughs> Have pens? We have quills. I mean, yeah, I have quills. Well, ink, maybe. Yeah. Quills. Like he like bases off on, on this pen right here just to take notes. You remember right. when space pens were a thing? Space pen. I remember space those. Pen. All right. He will conjure your challenges. There are three images oh. that appear. One is a hyena. Ooh. The next, okay. you see, is an army of orcs. And oh. the third is an enormous knight covered in charred armor and a flaming blade. All right. And he will reveal <laughs> your challenges are Zaza, the laughing teeth. This hyena spirit offers you a riddle challenge to pass his test. Oh. The second is Clan Mojak, an orcish war party, which is a horde challenge, which is a specific combat encounter. And then for, finally, oh. the third one is Vermes, the charred knight, which is a solo boss encounter. Oh. oh. And... Whoa. All of these were. Pay? Sorry, Sano. No, uh, I I just wanted to ask. So we can pick out of these three. What is our next encounter? Yep. Okay. 
and all three of them were um, potentially able to be beat at our current strengths. At you guys' level, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Shella pulls out the ball of the hyena that was in the cupboard that you found earlier. Pulls it out, shows the rest of the party. Me? I am one for omens. And this was a good one. I am willing to. Sprinkle it on a shoe, make it taste like a shrimp gumbo. (laughs) Indeed. Shrimp gumbo. But Stella holds it up and he says, I will pick the hyena. Because that is what the omens say. He places it on the table. I don't think we have to pick now. Indeed, you do not. I would suggest that you spend this time to train yourselves and to become accustomed to the power that you have been granted. And when you are finished, perhaps then. Nomalos, is there an armory somewhere in here? There is not. It looks I sad. Have, I have Do a you... place for target practice, if you want it. Would you like to know the rewards? Yes. Ooh. Yes. Please. I heard rewards? I was waiting for somebody to ask, and nobody did. So I was like, all right. Okay, so completing any of these challenges uh, will grant you level four. So it's across the board. Um, Zaza's challenge will offer you a cache of magic items. Completing Clan Mojok's challenge will increase the size of your homestead to a small estate, complete with active guard. And then, finally, defeating Vermes grants you a cache of essences. Oh, it's like... Wow. Oh, you're a giant that gives you essences. What are essences? Essences are materials of concentrated, I guess you might say, soul energy or life energy. These essences come in a variety of forms and purities. These essences can allow you to apply magical enchantments to armor and weapons and other items. You may also use them upon yourselves, granting unknown powers. Luca oh. looks at his uh, staff and is quickly <laughs> interested in upgrading it. Which staff? The fucking. <laughs> oh. oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking. Um. I was gonna. God. Yeah. You got. No, oh, you. Uh. So, what I wanted to ask before, but I forgot. What happens if we fail a challenge? For example, if we fail the combat against the charred knight, what would happen to us? Would you we die. Just die. And if we, like, for example, do the riddle one, do we also die if we yes. don't? Okay. So our lives are literally on the line for every challenge. Of course. How many more challenges do we have to go through? Seven more. Seven? Seven? Seven. 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 So guys, we just do a boss rush. (laughs) Okay, so so I'm confused. If we go into this one we're level four, will we get level five? Or was it expected for us to go into this level? No, no, your level, he, you just got level three. If you complete this next challenge, it'll be level four. Yeah. Mm. Then if we complete them, like, so if we complete, like, for example. You're not guaranteed uh, a complete. level for each one that you make. Okay, I was like, okay. yo, all right, that's kind of OP. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yo, chill out. <laughs> all right, cool. That was my question. Um, I- Ira's going to back into character. Ari's going to kind of nod, and he's going to wonder. Just a question, though. What is a burden, and what is that? Your burden represents your synergy with yourself. 
In this case, your soul's attachment to your vessel. As your burden increases, so too does your synergy. And indeed, the longer you spend inside of your vessel, the more you will learn of it, its wants, its needs, its desires, hopes, its dreams, and perhaps abilities that lie latent within the mind and body of the person you now inhabit. So, do any of us have any burden, any significance into it? You all have burden. Right, but is there more than others? You are a paladin, so you are allotted more from your faith. He kind of looks at that. Uh, right, right. Me, I guess, gaining this new power, is there anything that I need to know about myself? It's not really clear. There is clear. much you need to learn, which is why you must spend time training Mr. Nomalos, I'm curious. Yes? You said that we would die if we failed a challenge, but you already know that we're inhabiting these vessels, most commonly, I would assume, because we all have died before. What's to stop our souls from coming back? The resources required, which do exist, especially if we are near a soul font then this one, pointing to Luca, will be able to revive you. Soul font? What's a soul font? A soul font is a collection mm -hmm. and concentration of soul energy, or life energy, as you wish to look at it, that is connected directly towards the life stream. The stream of life that connects all living things throughout all creation. Soul fonts give a useful storage and filtering system powered by Maltos, in order to directly access the stream. Although, as simplistic as that might sound, only those that are attuned to the movements of the life stream can truly use this font. Those that in Calcutash are referred to as clerics. Luca sits back in his chair a little bit more smugly. Hmm. And where can we locate these soul thoughts? Or how? That is something that, unfortunately, I do not have the facilities to assist you. But there are some rewards within the Spiritorium that can give you access to them. Although I am not at liberty to reveal what they are. Since you can't reveal that exactly right now, um, is it safe to assume that the house will provide materials for us to make healing potions so that we have a higher chance of survival like it does for our, our food and such? Unfortunately, no. Only higher facilities can provide that. Like the estate you mentioned with the with Correct. the orcs mission? I see. Okay. He looks to the group and says before we battled Lavros the spider you gave us a map. Who currently has the map? Um, I think it's he... Ira. Uh, I think, yeah, I think Ira has the map. Because he asked yeah. for a map. Yeah, can so... Can... Yeah. can I see that, Ira? Uh, Ira's gonna kind of nod and scramble back into the bathroom as he grabs and onto, his, onto the items that he had on him and take it out and wander on back and hand it over to Effie. And goes back Effie, to the spot. Effie unrolls the map and looks at Nomalos. So, can you point us to where we're currently at on the map? Look carefully. You look. As you look carefully, you can see that there is a marker that shows where you are. Mm -hmm. You are currently in, the, in a region known as the Ardent. Whereabouts? Uh, north, nearly to the coast. All right, and and you're saying the aperture is here, and she like points to the middle, middle of the map, to the center. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The way to get there to the mm. aperture of where Na Nomalos points at it on the map, you would have to travel through the entirety of the Ardent, 
you would have to move into the ashen waste, and then you would have to make it to the mountains, and then move through the mountains, <laughs> then make it to the mountains. Oh. So you will have to pass oh, through my. three regions. Holy crap. Oh, wow. Who is up for a pilgrimage? <laughs> Just like his heart, he gets up right. and sits up in his chair. He st- actually, he stands up no much higher than him sitting down. Rubs his hands together after clapping them. Uh, those will be a lot of complex stories. Mm. So, so are there the like... Thing. Sorry. No, go ahead. Are there roads and um, like cities or inns Indeed. or places? There are places you know, of civilization towns. as well as the causeway itself. The causeway will help make much of the journey safer and faster. But there is always to be peril. The truly most dangerous region is the mountains themselves, as the area around the aperture is violent with energy. Hopi looks at the group and says, maybe it's a good idea to just walk and travel a bit, and once we're ready to rest, we pull the pouch out, and we come back inside the house and decide whether or not we want to continue the spiritorium. Ira kind of, you know, mumbles. Maybe it's the best we do another challenge or so. The the travel seems quite far, and we don't know really what's out there or who's out there. Okay. Okay. He nods and says, "Oh, go ahead." Some travel, and some and some going into the school. We traveled with. Two days, do a scroll mission. Travel for two days, do a scroll mission. Something like that. Sounds you know, it you know be it'll be good me. to oh. see, you know, other towns and other cities and whatnot yeah. on our way. I definitely agree. A town would be helpful. We could actually buy resources that our house does not have at this time, you know, until we can take the time to upgrade it. But a town would definitely help. Need not so, forget that we don't have any currency, so even if we went to buy things, where are we going to get money from? We can do tasks. I have See if they have any you. work for us. Oh. oh. Dust? Oh. He will drop ten dust on the table. In a little pouch. This is the currency of Conflux. It is returned to as dust. Apologies, I did not say something earlier. Currency is not something that I often think of. This was on the cannibals that attempted to visit us. So we don't snort this. He will smile. (laughs) (laughs) She. As he looks at the dust. Sano gives death stare to Chala. No. (laughs) Ira looks at (laughs) Effie and gives death stare to Effie and says, No. Look at it. Luca examines the dust. If you can make any checks. The dust is. On it. I got you. The dust is magical. It's almost like diamond dust oh. from Calvin's, actually. You feel that it is actually a not only a currency, but an ingredient. But it seems oh. that the ingredient also acts as a currency. An interesting application of, uh, of economics. Out of character, who here has played Path of Exile? Uh, I it. have not. I know of I've, it. I know, I know of it. it. Nope. Haven't. I watched you play it a couple times. Plays it. Uh, essentially, it works like this. Most currency items in Conflux are actually just ingredients that are used to build mm. and enhance <coughs> the world. <coughs> and dust happens to be the lowest form of ingredient, so therefore it's the most common. Got it. Oh, all right. So where can we find more dust? Get a job. <laughs> get, a job. <laughs> get a job. 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 So I figured it'd be perhaps easy kill those that have to take it from them. Complete missions, quests. There are myriad of ways. Let me nods. Part of the reason I suggested maybe finding towns is so that we can do odd jobs or maybe I can, you know, go in and figure out who's a bad person and just take all of their stuff. She Ooh. 
smiles happily. Ooh. So assassinate yes. people. No, just take their stuff. Santa oh. raises some bro. Thievery. Yes. Bailey crosses her arms. And Effie's gonna... like grinning from ear to ear. Ira's going to kind of raise his hand. Uh, comes the question, though. Uh, we can't be the only people uh, waking up, right? We're not the only ones. Uh, right? He kind of seems concerned. There are others that have awoken, yes. Doubtless, there are. But I do not know of them. Which is why it is even more important that I am able to complete my form one way or another. It matters not to me how I am reconnected to the Matrix, to the Index, as long as it happens. Whether you choose to do it by finding an actual Index, traveling to the Aperture, or completing the Spiratorium, it matters not to me. But... If you are asking me for guidance, that is what must happen. The phases cannot be, cannot be lingered. It is unnatural and harmful. Uh, do you believe that these others are dangerous? That we should be cautious of them? I do not know. Ira nods. He looks at Ira. You know, if they probably awakened near others like we did, and she again looks around at her party, they probably are similar to us and are together, you know, for survival, and then who knows what they've seen. So we can yeah. at least hope that they're not just waking up all zombified and only half awake like those other poor people in our area. The empty? Yeah, them. Mm-hmm. Definitely. If, if that's... Yeah. Uh, well, I was just going to say, you know, if, if that's what is, you know, causing the problem, if, if conflicts being out of whack, you know, with the, the different levels not happening at the right time and getting stuck on a phase, if that's what's causing all the empty and, and the changing of people through different vessels. I mean, I definitely agree we should try to fix it. Probably sooner rather than later. Santa nods in agreement and says, yeah, I think I think our best bet is to like first get to get used to our powers we now possess. Maybe do some traveling before, search up uh, search up a town to get used to civilization first and get used to the bodies and then maybe get up to a challenge of the spiritualism later. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that we can be traveling to a uh, thing, the area? I can't, aperture. Or, uh, yeah, that came means we can remember, thank you. The aperture. Uh, could we be doing the spiritualism on our way there? Yeah, I think so. I think like the best yeah. that we have is traveling like in intervals there and doing the spiritorium like from time to time on the way there. And when we realize the mountains are way too dangerous, for example, we just do the spiritorium like complete and like we just have to see how like in person to, to hey. see how those situations Effie nods and says but it seems like since Mr. Nomalo's here and she winks at him <laughs> just you know put himself on us a little bit and now we seem a little bit fitter it seems like maybe the next phase of the spiritorium isn't that far out of reach I don't think that we should do it like in in a very short time, like any time, like quick soon. I I think we should spend some time learning our new abilities. Maybe like going to a town, taking up a test, for example. I don't know, like fighting some bad people in the woods or something. I don't know. Because Just to go steal from people. I do well, have. A 
some of us need armor again, you know. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah, I lost my my leather armor, so I'm not that much useful than I was. He before. nods. Definitely. Okay, let's find a town and I'll just rob people. Yes, definitely. And I have a funny heavy. feeling in my stomach. <laughs> she lo- she looks around. Is this a surprise to anyone? No, no, it's not. It's not a surprise, just a disappointment. You could go and get yourself in more trouble than it's worth, don't you think? But look at me! Sam was visually not a fan of the idea of Effie stealing things. It's only from bad people, though. She winks. I mean, I would but like to still- think if, if she's stealing just from bad people, what's the harm? They're already shitty people. So, well, let's just take from them. I mean, they have what's coming right to them. For us to judge who's bad. Me. Yeah. But... Who's I'm a bad that- person. I'm good at judging other bad people. It still oh. gets us in trouble. For Daily sure. Face what do you mean, you guys? We don't have to be there with her. We just hey. gotta act like nothing's happening. Yep. Willful ignorance. Well, <laughs> Willful ignorance. I wanna have a like like a whole like our whole party stick together instead of one running off and then getting in trouble. Oh, maybe you guys cause a distraction. Well, now you're driving. Either way, in. either way, you need we need to get dust. And if there's an easy task that we can do to complete it, then let's do that. But if not, or in the meantime, I can just suss out who's who's bad in town and just take from them. We we don't have to do this uh, m- this moral mumbo jumbo in our minds. Once we arrive at the location and we and we gallivant around a little bit, we can assess the situation and yep. see what we can do there. Okay, and then we can have this discussion with people in particular. Alright? No sudden movements when we get to a town. Discuss things before you steal from somebody or you take up a task. Okay. Um, Her fingers are crossed. So is Chalice. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Really <laughs> well, size. <laughs> so, Luca seconds that. Yes. Big god. Lots of cool things happening. <laughs> well, he has taught me. She smiles. <laughs> okay. I think what the party wants to do is we want to start traveling to the thing across the fucking planet <laughs> whatever that can't remember the name right now and do the spirits where I am on the way is that where what we're agreeing on kinda yes we travel yeah. and we find a nice combat position with elevation yes. and good stable regions where we, a nice place to fight something and then we'll fight it there I'll head to ruin our new home with a knight swinging its sword or a horde of orcs trying to attack us. It also gives us an option on our way to look at terrain and see which one makes the most sense. Indeed. I mean, we don't even have to fight. We can also do the riddle one. Is anybody here good at riddles? I am the best. The absolute <laughs> one. Of the um, I have, I have <laughs> some kind of logical thinking, so maybe that will help. Can I insight check Chala? All right, so normally social checks don't work on players unless the players allow them to. But let me ask you this. Do you believe him? No. Then you don't have to roll. <laughs> you don't fucking believe him. The absolute best. <laughs> the absolute best. <laughs> the absolute best. This was you the don't even was... know which way is north. Remember, this was the man that uh, had a genetic flashback in the middle of your battle, dude. <laughs> <laughs> we should have stayed in the trees I'm the best at this right. <laughs> so she looks at Sano and says no, no. so it seems like one of us is good at riddles but not all of us while all of us are good in battle that is true but the Combat will be much more work. <laughs> you I mean, see <laughs> Steno just trying to get <laughs> to, to, to not get in combat again. <laughs> I mean, what? these r- riddles are probably just as hard as the combat. 
Well, Effie, you will have a lot, a lot, a lot of opportunities in your life to fight things and people. How many opportunities will you find yourself in? Or your life and the stake of the dream relies on a riddle. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not smart. Also, but I I like the reward more from the hyenas. A magical weapon. Yeah, but I mean, we could the also the increase our homestead and get access to other stuff, like maybe an armory or a smithery or, you know, potion maker. Yes. At the end of it, we mm. will just die, so it doesn't matter which one we do. True. If we fail. But, okay, Effie, let me try and convince you one second. Okay, so you say you're not too smart, you're not good at riddles, okay? Back when I'm from, we used to take a barrel, a small barrel of firecrackers and tie it to the end of a donkey's tail. <laughs> and then somebody would spank the donkey and it would start to run oh. slowly. Why would you do that? And then the firecrackers would go puck, 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 puck. And they would, the donkey would go faster than the, than the speediest racehorse you would have ever seen. He looks horrified. Fantastic move. <laughs> it is a brilliant thing to see. And it's a <laughs> metaphor for your intelligence, Effie. Once we're in a situation <laughs> where a riddle costs you your life, Holy shit. your f brain would be fast, fast. Fast. We increase your brain. Yeah, you see Sano like going over because he sees Charles on his side, like like putting his arm around him. He's like, mm -hmm. see that that's exactly how I think. I think Fast. you all are just doubting yourself. Faster than Melee with magic or Luca with whatever Luca does. Fast. <coughs> hey now, I am the fastest spell slinger this side of the river, okay? Oh. But can you sling a riddle? Tell us slides over. I should definitely <laughs> give it my best shot. And that's all I need. Let us Effie, I think we have a I think we have a good shot at this one. What? <laughs> I'm not putting my life on the line for a riddle. <laughs> but uh, I just but pointed out if, my view. If, if it gives us magical weapons or items, we mm -hmm. can use the items to go defeat the other guys. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't. Uh, here's the thing, right? The bigger estate sounds like a good deal. And if we're fighting a horde of orcs who are, I'm going to say it, probably less intelligent than me, which is saying something, we can just find a choke point in the terrain and just like pick them off, right? Okay. Firstly, racism. Secondly, <laughs> <laughs> Se secondly, he shrugs. Second, it's true. Is it? Second, I mean, how we know nothing about these orcs. I have never seen an orc. Can they fly? Imagine no. They spear piercing bows, and they just shoot us all in a row. Yeah, but like, let's say we find a cave, right? Yeah. And we're in the cave, and we just like pick them off as they come through the opening. Yeah. Say but... we miss. What happens yeah. then? What do you mean? Say so so don't they miss, hit us and not we hit them. What? Why would we miss? You saw the fight with the spider. You saw. Well, now we've learned from that. And... missed. Well, we learned from that, and look at Namalos here. He believes in us, and so now we got some more juice. Namalos will yeah. stop smiling. <laughs> so, you know. Aino <laughs> 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 looked at Shama. <laughs> he saw what you did. I'm just uh, saying, Effie, I don't know. I, have the don't, I don't have the most confidence in a horde combat. I have a lot of confidence in a horde combat. Okay, you come in and out sneaky through bushes, yeah? Sure. One of them sits in the bush. <coughs> How do you there, sneak? There, there won't be any bushes. Then what do you do in the entire combat? 
I just stab and I run away and I stab and I run away. Mm. I throw something. I stab. I take them out. You saw how good I was. I get, I, and then I again stabbed. <laughs> okay, so you get stabbed. That's part of the deal. That's not a deal that I agree on. I, I mean, we're adventuring. What do you think is going to happen? I don't know. If we have the choice to not fight. So, okay, so what does everybody else think? Do you think we can do these riddles? I think we can do these riddles. A little hyena isn't too bad. I, I mean... Chella, <laughs> you're you're a ranger. You know how. What is a hyena like? So a hyena is very close to a. Um, it's like a large mouse, but it eats <laughs> flesh. <laughs> um, a famous famous thing about a hyena is that the the women they are in one mammal where the females are larger than the males, and that is why they I can't say this joke on the street. I know so. you can't. <laughs> it's, it's, okay. Just, I, it's, it's, it's okay. I'm right out of shit. Okay. But so it's a large rodent is what I can tell you about. That eats flesh. So probably each answer that we don't get right it's going to eat one of us. Or damage us. Or eat one of us. Yeah, and what do the orcs do? <laughs> Decapitate us? Yeah, sure. Yes. Right? I mean, that would make sense. Well, looks like we just have to fuck around and find out. But honestly, maybe we really should find a, a town first so that Sano can get some armor and Chala can I mean, get his bow back, right? I agree maybe on not. that one. Chala still, Chala still has his bow, but I wouldn't mind getting one. Does Shala still have his bow? Does yeah, Shala... because yeah. yeah. He does. He grabs his hair, runs his hand through it, grabs his bow. He has a bow. I thought it was destroyed by the acid. No, because the effect was taken off, remember? Oh, so it wasn't shit. It was yeah, yeah. Yeah. never mind. But yes, Seno does need armor. He looks a little squishy and she pokes his his tummy. You just feel a rock hard muscles. Oh my fingy. <laughs> <laughs> Not the thingy, bro. No. She shakes her hand out. <laughs> Not the thingy. Seno looks bro. like uh, Seno looks shocked as, as he like thinks he like <laughs> like damage. He's like, oh. <laughs> same thing. Okay. All right. So what are you guys gonna oh. do? It's getting about um, that time. I, from what I'm gathering. Ow is I think we want to go find a town and as a long-term goal, we want to be going to a cool place across the world and doing the Spiritorium on the way. Uh, for the boss, I think we need to discuss that probably after game as it seems yeah. like a lot more strategizing that we, that, than we need because each boss does have like quite mm -hmm. a good section of things that could benefit us for the next one um uh and then i guess outside of character we should probably be rolling for uh, our level ups and stuff so we can get that yeah. out of the way for next session for the so we have more time yeah, yeah about, and about i got all yeah. right. well you guys go ahead and uh roll your hit points and um do you guys know how to do that no, so, uh, which way does slash go R again? slash goes this way? Yeah, R D D it's, slash R space D D. It should look like this. Okay. Where is where are you doing putting that at? Where it should look like. Wait, should look like that. Ah, oh, okay. But with the slash. Oh. So, so That's if you're what, a DA. So for D10 is uh, less it's than our, it's, six. It's less than six. Um, okay. What would I be as a paladin? D10. 
D10. Yeah. Sorry, okay. I'm just, uh, sorry, I just copy paste exactly what you put there. You copy paste what, what, what Chala put there, but you put slash roll in front of that in the space. Barbarian's D12, uh, and it's R R7. It's 7. R7. All right. And I'm a 6? Yes, yes. Right. You're, you're a 6. D10, R6. Okay. And what is okay. it for wizards, please? Ooh, 8. D6, R4. Got max. Damn. Nice. Nice. Bruh. Fucking pog. Man, so, <laughs> ma fucking... so many of you guys rolled max. Crazy. Yeah, yep. I rolled yes. fucking pog. 10. Chala has 32 HP. So, I get... Alright, let me go ahead and... So uh, get do you guys know how to adjust like... your own hit points? Do you need me to do it? No, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Alright, I, I got you. I got yeah. well, okay, cool. Thank she's, you. She's on a Mac, so I'll do it for her. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I just go into the actual sheet and just. That's where you're supposed to do so it. That's where you're supposed to do it. It's on the sheet. Ooh, so I have 41 max HP now. Dear yeah. Lord. So, so just tonight, I didn't get a chance to do this in game. Chella, I, Chella yeah. goes into the bathroom when it's his chance and everyone's gone. And I'll put two slices into his chest. The Ooh. scar up. Ooh. Wait. The blood rituals. Character development. Mm -hmm. Oh. Ew. 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 He'll blood up the wall for the next person who walks in. Ew. At least um, it's not cheap. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to bug, but chat's like, I rolled a d8, not a d10. Did I do my roll did wrong? You? I'm sorry. Oh, I yeah, think you, I yeah, did. You did. You did. Yeah. Okay. How do I? I'm sorry. Okay, here. Stop oh. saying sorry and just listen, all right? Instead of a D8, okay. R5, it's a D10, R6, because you're a power. So just okay. type, type out what you did before, but replace the 8 with a 10, and the 5 with a 6. Okay, thank you. Thank you. It's okay. Oh. And so you said, and then replace the 5 with a 6? Mm-hmm. Okay. Because the minimum is half plus 1. So there you go. Yes. Uh, I didn't. Didn't really do. <laughs> I just moved. It's just instead of 32, went to 33. <laughs> Still more. Yep. Watch that one hit point is going to be the difference between you being unconscious or not. And you're going to be like, oh shit! That's what happened to me last time. My goodness, well, so, my uh, hair is literally. <laughs> well, so at this level, Chella should. Chella, it says in the wiki, I think that Chella gets like a caladonic gauntlet. Yes. Uh, a bunch of you are going to be getting your. Uh, all of you are going to be getting your subclasses. Which means that that will be represented through the next period of you traveling as you, like, training in the house and developing these things. So, it'll be kind Got of it. a natural thing. Alright. Awesome. Which is gonna be great! I'm sorry to ask. I'm just trying to make sure because I'm still learning. Um, yeah. I also have a con modifier. You add that, that as well. Like, Oh, so yes. I add plus three? So the total amount that you should be adding this level is nine. Oh, okay. So you should be at 35. Gotcha. Wait. Okay, Wait. thank you. Ooh, I'm sorry. Thank you, boy. Since, oh, I forgot to add my con mod. Do not add your con mod. I did my. <laughs> thank you. I'm sorry. Alrighty. Well, let's start looking at fan art because I've got people waiting on me. Oh, yay! Because I have a game after you guys that I play in. Whoa. Oh. All right, give me a wow. second. Wow. I would stream it, but they, they're embarrassed, boys. Oh, good. Aww. Clap those cheeks. So guys, join the living world. It's great. As you were about to see a crazy patch. Join the living world. Whoa, Ryan. Wow. <laughs> Holy shit. All right, I'll get to the subs in a second. Wow. Power Rangers <laughs> and toast. You want some? Oh it's God. buttery. <laughs> when the house okay. music hits. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> when so Chala wants uppies. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> oh shit, we got some Waymaker fan art. Ooh. You know, Melee, I still don't believe that is Zeno. 
Also, I'm not sure Luca was alive to begin with. Stand <laughs> <laughs> at <laughs> What? <laughs> Freaking conspiracy <laughs> theories. What, bro? Wait, so how does uh, Chala look at Luca? Is he just like. Shadow he's just a walking zombie? Him. Yeah, that's why you don't show your eyes. <laughs> but you just see them. You're an automaton. <laughs> this is uh, Ira, Ira and Roxana. This is that sick ass on fire Ira art. Holy shit! No, oh, but he's, wow. he's on it is so sick. <laughs> that moment when Luca notices his new package, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my Literally. favorite images, dude. Man, I love this too. Ocean. Man. The party in their house clothes. Bro, oh, I love the I love like Seno's hearts. <laughs> bro, he's got the heart briefs, yeah. bro. Yeah, he do. Hell yeah, I I love it, bro. I I'm a fan of Maylie's Victorian gown, bro. It's, it's show, very cute. Show it's nothing, very bro. cute. Effie's journal. Yeah, this is pretty much. What I expected. Oh yeah. My God. <laughs> oh, my God. oh my God. She does look beautiful. Look at that dress. Yep. Oh, look she? at the blushing bride. Bro, the heavy as well. <laughs> but, oh, yeah, by the way, I didn't get to say this joke in character because I couldn't fit in. But when when Damalos was talking all that shit about like the humans being pitiful, I typed in chat, oh, does anybody know where I can get a vacuum cleaner? Because I'm going to have to Ghostbusters this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> This is great. Me, me, carry me. Oh. <laughs> Maybe you should get a job. <laughs> oh my god. I just figured that since it's an ingredient, there might be easier. Don't ways worry, Melee. It. It's what must be done. <laughs> oh my god. He did what? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Casey drew you guys as kids next door. I that's love it. So good, dude. Oh, that's oh so my god. Good, that's man, so Mika, good. Am I supposed man, to be number two? Some crazy dude. facial hair. The K and D fucking. That's so good. Oh, oh man. Definitely that's number two. You're definitely number two, bro. <laughs> I love it. It's so good. That is sick. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Wow. Are you playing fruit ninja on the couch? <laughs> Please don't ruin the couch. It's the coconut. Is that the coconut? Yeah, it is the coconut. Right. Oh, it's totally the coconut. Bob. Bob, the we coconut. We still do have it. All right, I yep, gotta go back through inventory. and uh, I gotta go back through and thank all these subs. Wow, Redmond thinks of the 10 gifted subs earlier. Reoff, welcome back. Haven't seen you in a while. Silver Sage, thanks for the five gifted subs. Reoff dropping a big hundo. The Australian Opal Miners back. Thanks, man. We've been missing you around here. And Wow Redman gave out another five gifted subs. What a bunch of cool people, man. Thank you guys so much for all the support. That puts us at 2,719 subs. That's fucking Let's crazy. Go. Oh. Wow. <laughs> That's Ooh, wild. That's that's a level of that's a level of poogers. I didn't think I was gonna see it again. Yeah, a lot of poogers. Okay, so Child real quick before I have to go, um, yes. Living World is going to be ending its first phase of testing here pretty soon. Um, I got to talk with uh, Zahab probably tomorrow because you're gonna go to bed after this. Yeah. 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 So I, yeah, I'll talk I with you. Up. What's up? No, no, I'm just. We'll talk after. I'm going to be right. in another country too. So I'll oh, okay. we'll see if I can find the time. All right, all right, all right. Well, I'm going to try and talk to Zahab as soon as possible to get that set up. To be clear, to anybody here who got gifted a sub or is interested in any of this in any way, we will be opening up the living world to, to subs. So if you want to be able to play in the living world, you'll be able to do so if you are sub to the channel, and that includes a gifted sub. And as long as you have that sub, then you'll be able to continue playing. Now, you'll be able to play as an NPC, not a full adventurer. You still have to go through the Patreon for full adventurer status. But we're not ready for that yet anyway, because we're still training DMs and getting them interviewed. But the Living World's next testing phase to test all the automation that wonderful Zahab has programmed 
will be in the next phase and that'll be open to sub, so. Yeah. Hugs. The next phase. Slash next phase is gonna be fucking crazy, guys. It's Hugs. Be fucking slash crazy. and or kisses. I'll see you guys next time. See you. Bye. 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 Bye.